I decided to enter the God of Fire jam, where you have one month to create a game based on a theme. I used only three weeks though, let's see if I can finish a game. The theme is Everything Changes. I used my first day to find the game ID. I wanted the changing to be a core mechanic, so the player needs to use it to progress. My ID is that you're a character lost in some unknown place, who finds a flashlight which opens new dimensions. You need to travel through the dimensions to go back home. It seems ambitious, but I think it can be funny to play. To create the flashlight visual effect, I used a sprite mask technique. Hopefully, I worked on that a year ago. I made a video and a plugin, so easy peasy, I installed my own plugin and everything was working fine. Then it was time to draw the character. I went with a simple design, so animating it would take less time and effort. I think he's looking pretty cute, so I assembled him in Godot. I created a script so he can move and jump, I'll do the animation later. My idea is to change the physics state of the world based on where is the flashlight. I first attached a collision shape to the mouse. I used the Godot Geometry class to clip or intersect the terrain polygons with the mouse polygon. Of course, all of this happens in real time, but polygon calculations isn't that difficult, so it shouldn't affect performances too much. Moreover, I'll use this technique only where needed. The rest of the levels will be made of simple collision shapes. I designed the first level. I chose a fixed resolution and a simple design to simplify things. I'm pretty happy with the perspective and the black borderline style. Using other colors, I created a second scene and tried it with the sprite mask effect. I'm really happy with the results. I worked on a level manager so the player can transit from a dimension to another. My code is an absolute mess, but it managed to set up each scene correctly depending on its state, like current or exploring. So the mask effect and the collisions are being applied correctly. I want the game to have an embedded tutorial, so I started working on this first scene. It looks fine, playing around with light allows me to reveal only what is important. Thanks to this introduction, I'm sure the player knows how to move, jump and grab objects. I started the week adding a transition effect for when you start exploring a new dimension. I simply take a screenshot of the game, I load the new dimension in the background and make the screenshot disappear using a shader. The goal of each level will be to find and reach an object which is similar in both dimensions. It acts as a key opening the next dimension. I wanted the character to be able to talk, so I created some speech bubbles. This storytelling adds a lot to the game. I created some more levels, so I'm sure the player is introduced to the changing physics between both dimensions. Again, more levels, but this time I added spikes to the game, in order to add some complexity. I also added animations and particle effects to the player. Drawing each level from scratch was really time consuming, so I decided to create a level editor to speed up my workflow. I made a tile set with every configuration so I can use it with an auto tile map inside Godot. Seems good, now I want to be able to change the colors of each level. I need to change the carpet, the walls and the foreground colors. The background is transparent. 
so I can change it depending on what's behind the time map. So I made each part a distinct color, green, red and blue. Then apply the shader to the tile map, which turns green, red and blue into the chosen colors. With this new system, I was able to create a bunch of new levels. At this point, I created a level selection scene, uh, otherwise I needed to play through each level to test a new one. This was not easy because each and every dimension is linked to the previous and the next one. But I managed to do it and this was a huge time saver for me. Should have done this earlier. I then created the main menu of the game. I wanted to introduce the sprite mask mechanic there. I think it's a smart way to welcome new players so they learn about the game as soon as they land on the main menu. I also made a pause menu so you can navigate back to the main menu and reach the settings which I still need to do. At this point I also reached out Pierre Thibault to ask him if he could make some music for the game. Should have done this earlier but this genius managed to create 16 tracks changing progressively and looping over to the first track with almost no equipment and within two days. Shout out to him, check out his YouTube channel in the description. I have created the settings menu. I've added more objects and designed new spikes too. As I received the music made by Pierre, I made a music manager. The important part was to make a crossfade when you change from a music to another. I made a saving system so you don't have to restart from the beginning if you leave the game. I also made the last level which is a bit special but I don't want to spoil it to you. I added some SFX made by Pierre again. Then I did some playtesting with friends and corrected a few things. As they recommended, I added a death count and created a speedrun mode with a timer. Last day of the jam. I did a stream marathon until the end of the jam in my time zone which was at 5 am. I had the time to create an online leaderboard using Silent Wolf. It will show the top 25 players and your position if you're not in the top 25. I finished with a lot of polishing and added some details. Then an hour before the end of the jam I created a cool each page and uploaded Lost in Parallels. A few minutes before the deadline. The game is available on each for free. You can play it on your browser or download it on Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Link in the description. During the voting time I received a lot of positive feedbacks. We are now one week after the jam and so the results are available. Lost in Parallels ranked first, so I received $568 of cash price. All of this motivates me to go further and I want to work an extra month or two on Lost in Parallels to publish a finished game. So if you want to know what's next, follow the channel and join the Discord to get involved and try some early versions. See you soon.